Hi guys, welcome to Go Tutorial Part 8. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. And today we are going to implement a database as well as a form of user authentication into our application. So this application, this user module that we've created thus far, uh, let's go over what we've created. So we're going to run it real quick. So here's our application. We have a login form. We have a sign up form. We can sign in. And when we sign in, we get to this little uh, dummy page. And it shows our little username up here as well. And this is being passed through a cookie, which is nice. So, of course, the biggest problem with this application as it currently is, is that when you sign up, you do not actually register a user because there's no actual database to store our user base in. Also, when you sign in, you can literally put in anything and any password and it will log you in, as you can see. So we're going to change that today. So the first thing we want to do is we want to implement a database. And we're going to do this by using SQL Lite 3, which we used before. And the reason we're going to do this is for consistency's sake. Now, if we're using SQL Lite 3 for our other database, when we do merge these two applications into one application, we will not have to make multiple databases. So let's make our imports. So our first import is the SQL Lite database, or the database backslash SQL. And this is our second import, which is our SQLite driver. Now we're doing all of this in our data.go file, just to make things more consistent. Obviously, the data file should have the database in it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to save the data that we get from our login form. So if we go to where we log in, you can see here that we have all of our form values here of all the five different fields for our user aside from our unique user ID. So we need to make a database that accounts for all of this. So let's create a function called save data and inside of it we are just going to pass a user instance which means a pointer to user and this function is not going to return anything. So we're going to create a database variable inside of our save data function called db and this is going to open our database. We're going to input our driver name which is SQLite 3 and then we're going to input the name of the database we want to create which is going to be users.sqlite3. Next, we want to write defer db.close. Now what this actually does is this will close the database after this function completes running. It's not necessary to do this. Uh, if you guys remember how we implemented our database before, we did not use any defer or even close the database. And usually it's just nice practice to close the database or even if you're just reading from files you want to write defer close at some point. It's just a general idiomatic go to do this. Now we need to do a db exec and we need to put in the SQL that we're going to run. So here's our SQL. We are going to create a table if the table doesn't already exist and this table is going to be called users going to have five fields, all of which are going to be of text. So notice we're not putting in our unique user ID yet, and this is because we haven't generated it. We will do this in a later tutorial, but for now we're just going to create our database with five different fields. A first name, a last name, username, email, and a password. All of them are a type of text. So now we need to create our TX variable by typing in db.begin. Then we need to prepare our database. So we need to actually put in the SQL that we're going to use to prepare it to enter in the values. So here is our SQL. We're just going to insert into our users table 
the first name, last name, username, email, and password. And then we pass a bunch of question marks as our values because we are going to read them in. So to read in our values, we pass in stmt dot, and then we pass each of the values in. So, the, okay, so now we're reading in all our values. And I lied before, we actually want to return an error from this actual function. So we've opened the database, we've created our table, and then we have created or we've inserted our uh, variables into the table. Finally, we need to commit these changes to our database by calling TX commit, and then we are going to return the error, which is ERR. So this is our save data function, and we can actually go into our main function here, and we can call save data on our user here. So if we just type in save data and we put in U, this should now work. This will now create a database with these as the uh, username. Uh, password, etc., etc. We're going to remove this set session here. This is creating a cookie using this user, but we don't need it anymore now that we're actually saving everything into a database. So now that we've removed that, we need to now look at our login function. So if we look at our login function as it is currently, we read in the values from the login form here. Then we just make sure they're not empty. Then we deploy a cookie with set session. And then we change our redirect to example. So now we need to create a function inside of our data.go file that will allow us to compare the username and the password that are being entered in here with what we have in our database. So we're going to create a function called user exists this is going to take in a type of user and it's going to return a boolean type and you'll see why we're returning a boolean later so because we did not declare our database as a global variable in here we need to redeclare it in here so let's declare it like we did above we also want to defer and close it finally we want to create a variable or two variables rather one called PS and one called US and these will both be of type string now these variables are going to hold our password and username that we actually read from our database so let's query the database and we are going to do it very simply we're going to say select username and password from users where username equals and remember when we actually insert a variable into our um, into our SQL here we need to surround it with single quotes so we're going to put in a single quote and then we're going to type in u.username to concatenate it And we're going to say end password equals, and again we're going to make a single quote and type in password, or u.password rather. And then we will concatenate this with a quotation mark string. So there we go, that's our query. This will actually select both the username and the password and it will match it with both the username and the password that we've inputted through here. So to handle our error in this case we're just going to say if error does not equal nil return false. So if we get an error from this query it's going to return false as our boolean value here. Now we are going to iterate over the values that we selected from the database. So we're going to say Q next for q next q dot scan and we're going to scan in the variables that we get so it goes username then password so we're going to scan in our uh, us and then ps and we need to do this pointers so us and ps 
And then finally, we are going to uh, actually match the two values with our value of user that we bring in. So we want to say if us equals username u.username and ps equals u.password return true otherwise return false. And there we go. So that's our function for uh, verifying if a user exists in our database. So let's actually implement this now. So if we go into our login here, we want this to be inside of our if uh, name is not equal to an empty string and if pass is not equal to an empty string. So we're going to say if user exists and we're going to input our user which we will create right here. So we input it like this. We could create a variable. So we could say, okay, u equals an instance of user like this. And then we could just pass in u here. And this would actually be the better way to do things. So we say if user exists, and then we want to copy and paste this stuff inside of here. So if our user exists, we deploy a cookie and then we redirect to example. Otherwise, we just redirect back to our index. So this is a very simple implementation of authentication. And having the cookie is, of course, extremely important. And you'll see in the next tutorial why this is. Because we want to be able to check while we're in the uh, inside of our uh, example page here if that cookie exists. And if that cookie exists, then the user will be able to continue working um, past the authentication. So that's actually how authentication normally works. For example, when you log into Facebook, you put in your username and password, and they only match you against the database when you put in your username and password. Usually what happens is Facebook will issue you a cookie after you log in. And this cookie will only last for a certain period of time. And then after the cookie is deleted, you'll have to log in again to verify that you are in fact you. So that's basically what we've created here. So let's run this and take a look at what actually is going on. So to run it, of course, we need to run all three files at once. So here's our login. First, let's try to log in. So we'll type in test and say password. And if we hit submit, it won't let us log in. And we're not getting an error back here. So let's sign up. So our username will be a capital tensor. First name, John. Last name, Doe email tensor at tensor.com and our password will be password and we will submit that and we are getting an error here and that's because we didn't fix things to stop our sign up from sending us to our example so we're not actually getting an error if I actually type in tensor here and then I type in password it should log us in but because we didn't have the cookie before, we couldn't actually get to the example. So let's change that. To fix what just happened, we need to change the redirect from our sign-up form. So our sign-up form was redirecting to example. We want it to redirect to our login screen. So while we're at it also, we're going to open up our SQLite browser, as you can see here. We have created a first name and a last name and a username. So all the fields here exist. Now this is a problem, of course. We do not want to store the actual password inside of our database. So we're going to have to create a function to encrypt our password. This is, of course, something we're going to do in our next tutorial. So let's rerun everything and make sure it works again. OK, so now here is our login page. Let's create a new user, and we're going to call it test user. And the first name will just be tester and then user. Our email will just be test at test.com and our password will be test. So let's submit this. So now we actually go straight to the login form and we can actually type in test user and test and this should work. So as you see here, now it says hello user test user. 
And if we actually go, say we go back to uh, our login page without hitting the log out button. If we were to type in example again, this would send us back to our test user page. So we are keeping the user who's logged in's name using these cookies, which is very cool. So if we were to come back here without logging out and we type in Tensor with a capital T and then we type in our password, it would actually change to Tensor. And this is happening because our cookie is now changing. So if we log out now though and we try to go to example, it shouldn't work. And there we go, we have a uh, empty page. And we're going to deal with that later when we add a redirect if there is no cookie. And one more thing before we finish. So let's log in again. So Tensor. Now let's check out the cookie that we actually created. So here are our cookies for localhost. And the cookie we've created was called session. And as you can see here, there's this long uh, key here that is being encrypted and this has both of the username and the password inside of it. And if we reload our SQLite browser we have two users now in here. One test user and the other one tensor and it shows their passwords in plain text. Of course like I said before this is something that we want to get rid of and also another problem that we have with this current implementation is that we could have multiple users with the same name uh, in in this actual database which could be a problem anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial please feel free to like and subscribe and if you have any questions of course feel free to comment if you dislike the tutorial go ahead and dislike us we will be back after the holidays we will be creating uh, at least two or three tutorials per week for the videos and our written tutorials should start back up after the holidays are finished. Anyway guys, I hope you guys have a good holiday.